Okay, so we're, we're solving three particular problems that exist in the industry today. The first one is product. The products that insurers today, typically, particularly on life, are not intended for direct distribution. They're intended to be sold by agents or relationship managers in banks. And as the market in Asia expands, as hundreds of millions of people enter the addressable space for insurance, a model where you're going to sell products through agents or banks is not going to expand and be able to service that model. So we need to find simpler products that can be distributed directly. The legacy systems are also not designed to support direct markets. They're old, they're back systems. Around 70% of the systems being used in Asia today have got a code base that was coded in the 1970s or 1980s. They're old COBOL engines with you know, eight hour batch windows. This is not going to create a great direct experience for the customer. And finally, the processes which everyone uses today are incredibly manual. They're manually intensive inside brokers, inside banks, inside the insurers, and the handoffs in between. What we're doing is creating a platform that creates a seamless experience where we can get straight through processing happening in real time between all of the participants in the ecosystem. So what we're doing is effectively taking all of the functionality you'd find in a legacy policy administration system and putting, encoding that using smart contracts on a blockchain. This creates a whole different environment for all of the participants. It means that distributors, insurers, and even reinsurers have got access to the single source of truth in real time. We enable real time transactions and a single source of truth to everyone in the industry. And I really do mean real time transactions. We currently build blocks sub second and that creates a real time transaction environment. Blockchain provides this ideal platform where you've got multiple participants wanting to access a single source of data and being able to trust that data without having to trust a third party to be holding it for you. So this means that distributors, insurers and reinsurers can each have their own nodes and hold their own copies of the chain, knowing that they're looking at the same data as the other uh, parties to those particular transactions. This is ideal for insurance. Also, the, the, the smart contract structure is also ideal for policies and parties and all of the participants in a policy. We can represent that structure, you know, in, in a quite a detailed form within the, within the smart contracts of the blockchain. Specifically, we're using a fork of Ethereum called Quorum. Uh, Quorum was created by uh, JP Morgan, and it brings two particular things to the, to the story. It, it brings uh, encryption of the transactions. So we use symmetric encryption so the transactions are only accessible to the parties to that transaction. Because it's also designed for private blockchain, it brings faster consensus mechanisms, faster block building. And that's how we can use rafting and build blocks, you know, sub-second, and that creates a real-time transaction environment. So that particular variant of Ethereum is quite powerful because it means that you know, Ethereum has got the most number of developers than any other blockchain in the market. Um, so it gives us access to a wider pool of developers to start with. Secondly, Ethereum itself has been tested under stress since 2015 when the public blockchain went live. That's more than any of the other, you know, Corda or Hyperledger have been tested, you know, up until now. So we have the confidence that you know, a lot of the issues with Ethereum as a blockchain have already surfaced, and that's not the case with some of the other software being provided for private blockchains at the moment. Finally, if you sort of use the internet as an analogy for blockchain, which is often done, you know, originally um, you saw extranets and intranets and all of these variants of the internet sort of coming about, private internets effectively. And so if you take the view that as the public blockchains, you know, expand and start getting capabilities such as transaction encryptions and faster block building themselves, 
then the private blockchains that are being built at this stage will start to evolve and actually move, migrate to the, to the public blockchains. And if you take that view, basing yourself off something like Ethereum at the moment puts us in a very good position.